So thank you. Let me present this work. So now I have a subtitle with uh, this one because because of these three weeks, everybody speak about Shova duality. So at some point I say, I must also discuss about Shova duality. So I will have a subtitle here now, so, and uh, Shova duality. So this work is done with some collaborators from ANSI, Julien from Kyoto, no, Loic, and Eric and Luc from ANSI. So just for introductions, I want to explain you why I'm interested on all this stuff. So in fact, it's really the, right on side of the slides of Paul Martin yesterday, coming from integrable system, so spin chain, uh, integrable system, quantum integrable system, classical integrable systems. And I, because of that, I'm interested about algebra. I learned something about this integrable system where I construct integrable systems. And after that, two things interest me. It's really the special functions and the Leonard pairs. So the Leonard pairs, you just introduce that. And the algebra allows, like he explains the Leonard pairs, you have a characterization by an algebra of the Leonard pairs. And now, like I say, my subtitle, sure by duality. And in this talk, I will present more precisely. So I choose one particular algebra I like. It's the RAC algebra. So not a lot of people discuss about that, but it's really the Q is equal to one of the Haskell Wilson algebra we saw at the different place during these three weeks. So it's a particular limit. It's not just, if you take Q to one, some presentation it doesn't work. So it's a particular limit. That's what you saw previously in these three, three weeks of talks. In this case, it will be a particular Leonard pairs. For my polynomials, it will have the same name. It's a Raka polynomial, so it's a particular polynomial. I will present that a bit. And it is connected to the centralizer of the enveloping algebra of SL2. During this talk, I will not discuss about the right side of this slide that disappeared. And now let me focus on the RAC algebra. So I will give you the definition and after I will discuss about the centralizer and the polynomial. I decided to do that because I found that quite nice because it's really a connection between what we discussed between these three weeks, centralizer and algebra to the one we are going to discuss more next week, which is special function RAC polynomial. So I found that quite nicely to present this type of work. So let me now focus on the definition of the RAC algebra, what I call RAC algebra. So it's, a gen it's an algebra, which some generator, so it's a RAC, what we call the higher rank RAC algebra, it's N minus two rank, and we call that Rn. And I have some generators, P and J, and this is by some I and J, satisfy this constant. So that is my generators of my algebra. And we recognize the more well-known RAC algebra is R3 when big N is equal to one, uh, big N is equal to three, sorry. And it's a rank one algebra. And just by conventions, I will always say the PJI is PIJ. I have a symmetric on the indices. It will be useful to present nicely the commutation relations. So now I have my generators. I must give you correspond to the commutators. The commutators are three indices. So it's why there are three points. And you discuss with some guy with only two indices and you ask for this equality. So the first time you saw the RAC algebra, it seems quite ugly, but I hope I can convince you it's quite interesting algebra in which a very nice property. So that is the relations for RAC three. It was very well known. And so for RACA4, I need to add one dot. So you see, you have one more dot. You have four possibilities, one, two, three, four. And you have two more relations. So when two guys doesn't sit together, they commute. And now you have one guy, PKL, we saw the commutators like that. So with different indices. And we ask for this equality. And these things, no, implies these relations, which is life quite complicated, but it's a relations. So that is the definition of my algebra I'm going to study. So first point, something nice in this algebra, I have some Casimir limits. So I have some combinations of polynomial in my generators, which commute with everybody. So again, I choose to visualize like that. So. My first Casimir is omega ijk, which is just, I take the commutator square. So it's why I'm 
put my circle like that, my ellipse like that, two ellipses at the same place, plus a lot of text. I don't report it because it takes all the page, but it's just written and we prove just because of the relations I show you previously, this guy commutes. And so you have four possibilities because you have three amongst four things to choose. So you have four guys like that. And one more, it's this one where no, the ellipse is not at the same place. So we can prove this guy and this guy are symmetric in the sense I can flip the indices you know, of the guy. So one, two, three is the same than two, one, three, for example. And there are central elements. So it's quite complicated and we use computer to do that. It's not just, okay, quite huge, but we can do that. And now, because it's Casimir element, I can ask to take some value. And that is what I call the special Raka algebra. So Juliet discussed a bit about the special as they wish for. So it's why I call Raka four. So the algebra previously, and I add these five relations saying this four guy will be zero and this guy will be zero. And I call that this algebra special Raka four. And this is really this algebra I'm going to study. So no, like I promised, so here I give you the definition of the algebra. I want to study sure by duality. So in which context this algebra appears? So I take the enveloping algebra of SL2, U SL2, and I ask an what we call the diagonal embedding of U SL2 in the tensor product n time of U SL2 by this very well-known formula. And I want to study the centralizer, the diagonal embedding. So in the sense, I want to look for all the objects in this tensor product, such that they commute with the diagonal embedding. So I have a way, I like picture. So I have this way to visualize the things. So I have my enveloping algebra USL2. I have my diagonal embedding delta, which send in the big, bigger things, USL2 tensorial N. So that is the image of that. And now I look, the black ellipse is all the guy in the blue one, which commutes with the red one. Okay, I have this guy and I look in all these things. What I, and our result is very simple. Is a special Raka N is isomorphic to fit the result of the paper. So isomorphic is this two row surjective. So it's a, in the language of, um, no, I am missing point. It's the first fundamental theorem. It's subjective, and you are also the injective. It's the, the result. The special Raka N is isomorphic to the centralized. So, up to prove that. So, I hesitate to give the proof, and I will not give the proof. I must discuss more things. So, but we just prove that using very well known results about classical and variant theory. So, we know some results previously. We make some nice limits and we can prove that. But before, but instead of explaining this proof, I want, when I draw this picture, I say, okay, I cannot, dis, I cannot say nothing. I must say something, sorry. I must say something about the bread group or the permutation group. During three weeks, we say permutation groups, bread group and so on, act on that and give the centralizer. So, you know, I will say you, okay, it's special Raka N. So I must explain something. So where the permutation group or the Borel group and so on appears, it's when we take no representations. So here, it's an abstract algebra. It's still my enveloping algebra of SL2. And now I take a representations, so spin, for example, the fundamental one in each space. So this guy and this picture become what? So I take a representation of USL2N. So that become just a matrix acting in C2 N times. And you see, I don't know if you see, but I lose the small hook, yeah. Okay, one more time, because it's nice. A little hook, no hook. <laughs> okay, and that is the work of Mary, is to understand this small hook at some point. It's really to say, okay, what happens? So I have my special Raka N, it's isomorphic to the centralizer. 
We believe uh, we have a proof it's still subjective, <laughs> but we lose the injectivity. So we want to understand that. And we know the answer somewhere because the answer, normally everybody in the room know, it's temporarily. Temporarily n times is really isomorphic to this guy. So it's really at this stage, you no know, temporarily appears again. So we want to understand how connect special n to this thing. So we can imagine some quotients to this algebra to again, to make appear the small group. So that is published in some series of papers. So that is really the first paper we do with Loic saying it's really what I show you here for big N is equal to three. After we do the same thing, but for Banaito, Banaito we replace here SL2 by OSP12. This guy has become what is called Banaito algebra and is the fundamental one is the Brewer algebra. So that we try to understand all this picture. And now the deformed case, meaning here you put a small UQ, this guy stays the same. Here it's special as we son free and we understand the questions. And the three dots is some paper which is in course. So it's my, yeah, that is what I want to discuss with you about show by the way. Okay. So now I hope you are convinced the special Raka algebra is interesting. So no, it's an abstract algebra. I want to study the representation of this guy. So my strategy is like Lie algebra. First things when we are Lie algebra is to find the Cartan subalgebra. Cartan subalgebra means I want to look for some guy which commutes in my algebra and sub abelian algebra. So I want to identify the sub abelian algebra of special Raka. I will do for special Raka 4. So it's not so complicated, that it's quite easy to show. All these guys, so these guys are central by definition. But if you remember, the definition is central. And the sum of all the one which I smaller than J is also central. And this guy I will call P1234. So that, that is even more, it's really central element in special Raka 4. And if you take P12 and this guy, so P12 plus P13 plus P23, which I'll call P123, these two guys commute together, commute with this guy, and so form this together form a sub an, an abelian subalgebra of special Raka 4. And I have a lot of choice because, because instead of one, two, I can choose two, three with two, three, four, or also one, two, three, four. And I have a lot of choice, but something very nice, all these guys can be put on some vertices on some very nice picture, which is an ecosido decaedron. And if you follow other things, I don't make mistakes, everything works like that. So for example, for one, two, one, two, three, I have four way to, to change the things. So one, two, one, two, three, that is the one, three we change and the one, two, three remains the same. And so for the moment you say, okay, why you do all that? It's just a way to write something. But you will see this picture a lot of times. So I hope everybody knows follow that picture because we are going to follow, to solve this picture all my lecture. <laughs> So, and I can learn a lot of things and see a lot of things on that. For example, no, I have different abelian, sub abelian algebra. I put the sub, but it's not the same case. Algebraian sub algebra bi, but I want to pick one particular one. If each one is different, I must study the representation theory for each sub abelian algebra. Imagine in my carton for the algebra, if I have two different things, I must do the representation theory for these guys, this abelian subalgebra, or for this one. And all to say, I, can, I don't need to do that if I need to find an automorphism of special Raka 4, which send any subabelian algebra to another one at the end of the story. 
in the, in the finite representation theory, when you choose correctly, correctly the parameter, E will be conjugate. Not you have some parameter, free parameters given by the Casimir, but really by the central elements. And you need to choose correctly this guy when you change points to points. I need to find automorphisms which go from one point, one vertices to another one. And that is just geometry. So, okay, I have this picture of to go to that guy to that guy. No, maybe from that guy to that guy. It just, I rotate my feet. So, one, two, go to one, three. One, two, three remains one, two, three. One, three, go to two, three. Okay. And it works. That's why the picture is nice. If you wrote this automorphism, so really, like I say, you read in the picture one, two, go to one, three. And yeah, one, three, go to two, three. It's what is written here. One, two, go to one, three. One, three, go to two. Three. And you can follow all the things works. Every vertices go give you. Some. And after you need to prove something because that is not a proof, but we prove after to say that is an isomorphism of special arc. That is the one I show you. But of course, you have also this one. So you rotate no around this point. I got. And so, for example, that is maybe more complicated. And yeah, one, two, for example, go to three, four. So one, two, go to three, four. It works. <laughs> one, two, go to three, four. And again, we prove that in a, in a morphism or special arc of form. And of course, now the picture say you that the immediately R5 is E. So again, R is the rotations around the pentagon. So of course, if I rotate five times, I get the identity. And the other one, it was the rotations around the triangle. Three times is the identity. So that is these relations. Again, three dots, because we have a more symmetries and so on. So we prove everything. And at the end of the day, the symmetry group we form is a permutation group of five elements. A cube, yeah. So that is a cube. We are happy because yeah, maybe I must show again. At the end of the day, we can show, I can go from any points, any vertices of this graph to another one, thanks to the permutation groups. So that is also proof. We can prove just, we can go from any body to any other body. So, okay, I just need to take one particular Abelian subalgebra. So I pick B1, and now I can start the representation theory. So B1, okay. I draw the picture like that. So I take the central element. I take this guy. So now I say, okay, P1 to P1 to three, it's particular. And I ask, it's Abelian, so they commute. I ask, they can be diagonalized in the same basis. And I choose, it is diagonal in the same basis. This basis is denoted by two integers. And I ask, in this basis, P1 to act diagonally with some number. So P12 will be my abstract element and mu n12 is some numbers. P123 is the same thing. I act diagonally. All, all my central generators are of course just the identity because I have in mind, I want some irreducible representation at the end. So I ask just some, some numbers here and that is the parameters that I say you the parameter of my representations. So I have five parameters in my representations and I have no things. And I make an hypothesis at this stage because I didn't succeed to prove my abelian subalgebra is maximal. I don't have that. So I put by end in these representations, the spectrum is non degenerate If it was maximal, I can, there was not an hypothesis here, I must put that in as an hypothesis and see if I can succeed to find some representations. So now I have representation of two generators, P1, 2, P2, 3. And now I'm going to use the relations of, I show you previously, of the special arc four to construct the representation of the other guy. So something nice, 2, P1, 3, P2, 3, generate a subalgebra, which is special arc of four. And so I study special arc of four. I take this free guy is special rack of three. 
And this three guy was very well known previously. So that we just use previous result. And the algebra impose the eigenvalue of P12 is some integer n written like it's really some n squared plus n plus some. It's a polynomial in degree two on n. It's not a choice, it's really the algebra which is that. And for example, P23 now take this following two diagonal form. So usually there is no P when you have to do a work of three because there is no P123. So that is why it's just a constant. And you have this two diagonal form. So I don't give you, a, and we get these expressions here. Yeah. I don't give you the expressions, but okay. We know these expressions. So again, to this guy. So for the moment, what I get? I get the blue one, which is diagonal. So I start from this P12, P123, and 1212 two appears on the other place. All these guys are here. I just compute. So RACA3, you can see on triangle. Maybe I don't say that previously, but in each triangle, I can show the RACA3. So just I show, oh, I can find representations for P13 and P23. I put on web. And two, three, and one, three appears in the place. Now you see, we can use also this triangle. It's also like a three. But see, P1, two, three, sees in this P on my basis. So that, I see, oh, it's automatically this guy will be three diagonal, but in the second indices, I put in green. So that is three diagonal in N. I have something three diagonal in P. And that is just previous computation of special RACA4. And now I really need RACA4 to de determine the other guy. And you will see we mixed the red and the green. Red and green. I think I must look for Google what is the color, but is yellow. <laughs> and yeah, that takes me just one second to do that. It's six months of computations. <laughs> so I don't show you that, but yeah, okay. To, to make all these things work, we can find the two, four, two, four, two, three, four, one, four, which satisfies all the computation relations of special RACA4. So yeah, when I saw that, just to put yellow, okay, why not? Um, so we find a representation which I call P indexes by a generator, the identity of my automorphism group, P E of X. So X belongs to special RACA4, and E is the identity of the permutation group of five elements. And that is the representation, just I show you, or part of it, of how I represent special RACA4. So that is matches. I know because of the automorphisms, I can construct a lot of other representations. Automorphisms, my representations, by definitions, I call this representation pi, and this is by G, which is an element of the permutation group of five elements. So I construct a lot of representation like that. And no questions, these representations are equivalent or not. So the answer is yes. And it's where the RACA polynomials appear you now in, in this context. So I'm going to look now for transition matrix between two representations of the same algebra. So I have PE, PG. I look for transition matrices between these two guys. So that is just the definition of what is a transition matrix. So even more generic, I can take representations and this is by G and H, which is two representations. That is two guys in permutation group of five elements. And I look for the transition matrices T, G, H. This is by these two elements. So I take my representation P, H, X, P, J, X. So that is matrix. And I look if it exists a matrix which conjugate this guy to get this one for any X. So the trouble, like I say you a bit, it's about the parameters. So I don't draw the parameter. Normally, these representations depends of parameters, of the five parameters I show you given by the casino. So it becomes a mess when you put all the indices. So I don't decide it for, for pedagogical reasons. I don't put that. But you can imagine here, the parameter must be well chosen 
so that these matrices exist. So let me say I'm clever, I choose correctly my things, and I will show this transition matrix exists. And I will show you these three dots saying this transition matrix, so the entries of that are given by Haka polynomials. So I just show you it exists and the exact expressions. And all these things and all the things I do previously allows me to get two things. So I will show you how I can prove, which is non results, but some relation between the Raka polynomial and also how to can characterize some Raka polynomials. So now I'm going to discuss about these three points if I have time. Okay, no, I don't know. 10 minutes. Okay, perfect. Oh. Like I say, uh, the blue means it's a representation where this abelian subalgebra is diagonal. The red means I choose a representation where no, these two guys are diagonal. Okay? And I look, so it's PE, and we can, we can check is the PR. Remember, the R is the thing which rotates the pentagon. And I look for this arrow. I look the transition matrix between these two things. So the claim that we really compute, the TER exists. It's a computation. We can show this matrix exists. And take, okay, it's what I say, the entries of this matrix is given by some well-known functions with the rack of polynomials. We did all the possibility using some trick because we have some groups, so we don't need, we did only on the generators of the permutation group of five elements. And we prove like that, all the transition matrix exists. So when I choose correctly the parameters, all these things are conjugate as we expect. And for example, first things, Ah, maybe I need to say something. I can choose also my matrix, which is symmetric. So if my matrix is symmetric, I know if my transition matrix exists, I can choose this transition matrix orthogonal. So the orthogonality of the transition matrix here are just that. T, T transpose is equal to the identity matrix. And that now wrote that on, as a component, by component, it's just a product of matrix. Knowing it's given by the Raka polynomial, it's a way you recover, for example, the orthogonality relations for the Raka. So that, okay, the informations, they are equivalent, and I know of to get explicit expression of the transition matrix. Now my picture, I can do something nice now, because, okay, I show you this guy exists. Now I can just say, okay, no, take a circle, or, very strong circle, but like that. One, two, you go to this point, to this point, to this point, and you arrive at the same point. So that means the transition matrix from this point to this point. So if I make the transition matrix step by step, like that, I must find the identity. If you wrote the things, it becomes this formula. So okay, let's like just, and now here I put again the parameters and so on, and okay. And this formula, if you look in the book, is called biderman elliott relation. So it's really a relation which is known previously for these guys, but okay, I prefer to show that than that, just a way to fake. And you see something nice also, in this picture, you have only pentagon and triangle, and or some composition. So for any cycle, you have in this picture, I can imagine you make something like that. It can be decomposed <coughs> in pentagons and triangles. So if this relation is true and the one for the triangle is true, I have no more relations to prove. All the cycle will disappear. And the other, other triangular face is also known is a Raka relations. So it's a sum of three Raka equal identity. So we are quite happy because no, that is sicker. So now I can just study some paths. Because if I study this guy, for example, I know it's equivalent to that. So now I can give you two points. I know the formula I get will be equivalent. If I get 
this one and this one, which I'm going to study just here. I can go like, I don't know, like that and like that. It will be give an equivalent relations just using Biderman Elliott and Raka relations. So it's what I think. I take the longest path in this picture. So that the longest path is a path of length three. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and no more. So this one is two, and you can just think about and I ask a computer to be sure. A computer send me an answer. The diameter of that is full, the longest possible one. It's easy to convince yourself. It's not so easy to give you a proof. But my computer send me free. Longest distance. Yeah, yeah sorry, distance. Yeah. yeah, distance. So I, you see, you know, I can compute the transition matrix between this guy and this guy. But I can decompose this one in three steps. So that gives me these definitions. So that is the entries of the transition matrix from one point to another point and decompose like, and that is the generalizations of the non-polynomial previously. And just my construction give me the unitarity relation for this guy. I know it's unitary because the transition matrix satisfy T3 transpose is equal to one. So I know these functions is unitary and the representation of my algebra give me the recurrence and the different relations for this guy. To give you a favor of the complication of the things, it's that is the difference relations. So one difference relations for this polynomial, so this G is written like that. So you see it's always the same degrees and you move the variables. You have nine points. These functions, I don't show you in the slide, but it's known, it's two page. But it's known, it's basically known. And so big guy satisfies these relations. And I need to prove nothing. It's just my constructions give me this G satisfies that. And I have a similar difference relations and I have also two recurrence relations just for free. So just, I don't discuss a lot, but I, take a finite representation at some point and we have i restrict my n and p my vector n and p and they satisfy these conditions if n is an integral but the constructions we choose that because the previous results was in this type of regions but it seems our constructions allowed us to get other regions for this synthesis so that I would like to study that more in detail. We make not a classification of representation of this algebra. Why? I suppose two things, mainly P12, P123 must be diagonalizable because it's diagonal matrix, but why? And I also assume the non-degenerate spectrum. So maybe there is more interesting things also to study really the classification, given classification of the representations. And of course, two trivial things to generalize in paper, not maybe in computations, is to study for bigger n, which give you very interesting polynomial with n minus two variables, and also the Q deform case, which will be the ASCII with some polynomials. And thank you. Thank you very much, Nicola. Are there questions? Yes. Uh, thanks. Uh, so, I guess, can you uh, can you find the <laughs> microphone? Oh, say uh, Raka five, for example. Yeah. So, generalization. Do you expect that such a geometrical, you know, intuition exists, or would it be completely out of control? Well, we think about that, but we don't succeed because we think it's it will be four D. That is 3D dimensional thing, so it must be 4D. For example, even the classifications of semi regular polyverons doesn't exist. So maybe not so nice, but in fact, yeah, that is very nice for me for, to make a seminar. <laughs> but, yeah. but maybe the important thing, maybe to remind, is really the face. It will be very interesting to see if you are only triangle and pentagon. If you are something else, meaning you have new relations or things. 
but I don't expect something. And that maybe it's quite easy to see if I don't think about that, but maybe you have only triangle, only pentagons in some four dimensional space. But uh, yeah. May I ask a second? Sure. Yeah. Uh, and so the this abelian subalgebra that you put on the vertices of yeah. your whatever. Ecovidodecaidron. Uh, uh, is it uh, easy to see that it's all of all of them, or is it just a subset of all of these? No, it's not easy. But for example, you can imagine also some linear combination of this guy, P12, P23. So I try to put on that on computer with, so I have 10 generators. I try to make all the linear combination I can. I obtain only that. It's not a proof, but OK. OK. Somebody else uh, in the room or on Zoom? Question. Paul. Yeah, please, Paul, go ahead. Help out. Yeah. Uh, so we see that dodecahedron for the Raka case um, in the Q Raka case, do you expect the dodecahedron picture to still show up? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yep. I think so. After you, you, you must be careful because yeah, you must imagine on what type of I, I act. I act only on the generator, which is not in the sum. I don't act on the PII, for example. Uh -huh. Here I act just on the PIJ with I is different of J. So maybe we have a more bigger symmetry if you think about the PII also. But in this construction, I don't need it. OK, thank you. A family of five parameters. Yeah. Uh, are they real or complex or? So I don't have a slide about that. Uh, at the beginning of the story, I don't care. Complex, what I, you want. After, when I want to make the transition matrix, and I, I need to take some square root of something. So it must be positive and well chosen is the sense then must the square root must be something which is positive. So it's even worse than that. It's real and well chosen. So, OK, so we're in R5. Yep. How large is your group generated by the T and the, well, the two element, the five uh, or fifth order and the cubic order? It's five elements, five, five. Uh, no, no, but you generate a large group together, no? No. no. Five. S5, okay. S5, yeah. So it's... you split the R5 in in chamber. Yeah. S5, it's 120. So 120 of them. Do you know if there's a relation within one chamber? It's more complicated than that. It's really some linear combinations of the parameters which appears in my functions. I don't show, show function for the moment, but the parameters appears really in the representations, like a linear combinations. And I must choose this guy correctly, such that all the sets are not positive. So it's really a mess. You have it's a polynomial of a degree eight, I think so I have eight zero and I need to choose something where it's positive. So choosing correctly the things, as you see, I found one case where it work well. But yeah, I don't know how to act with because when I act with that, I change also my sub Albanian algebra and change the representation. I just not act on the parameters. If I just change parameters, it's a different representation. Even what I try to explain you here, it changed the range where the parameter of my vectors are. And I guess that when the parameter is not or don't respect all the conditions you were talking about, you could add infinite dimensional yeah. representation. In fact, I start from infinite representation. And you choose. And after I choose some place where I have some zero at a good place, and I take, take uh, my finite representation like that. Thank you. Maybe I'll. Yeah. In one of your first slides, where you had the isomorphism between uh, special Raka and uh, the centralizer yes. of the U. There you go, the one with the hook. Okay, the hook you want. <laughs> yes. Yes, okay, and you had a, like, like you said, usually what, you, what ends up in the, the Q case, what you have is, is TLN, right? Which yep. would be the exact centralizer of this, but you only had projection in this in the point case, right? Yes. 
Do you know the explicit uh, surjection of special hacker on the TLM, like the generators, how they are, how what's their lift to special hacker, or as have, have you uh, um, tried to look into like the the the, the, the special hacker into TLM or how it could uh, help understand TLM better? In fact, we really look for when we we take different representation at this stage. For example, we find when you have spin one here. Uh -huh. We find the quotients of special RACA, which give broader algebra, like we expect. And the other one is also study. We know the quotients of this guy to get that. But after, there is no name in the language of temporary lib and so on. So this guy is really bigger than the one you know, I think, mm -hmm. even of the bread group, I think. Mm -hmm. That is really surjective in the centralizer, the generic one without representation. OK. I don't know if I answer your questions. Almost. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we, we could go on for because the talk was quite interesting, but maybe I'll bring this to a close. And why don't I ask you to thank Nicola, but at the same time, all the speakers in this uh, very nice two weeks that we just had. So. And thank the organizer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, again, Nicola. Thank you.